and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Okay, so Unite was last week. This is Unity's yearly conference where they talk about the current state of the engine and what's coming in the future. I was there, it was a really awesome event as always. Personally, I spoke to over a hundred people, so thanks to all of you who came up to me to say hi. Talking to all of you is always the highlight of these events. Here's my summary of everything announced and what's coming in the future of the engine. Unity invited me over, they paid for my flight and hotel, so this video is sponsored by Unity. So the biggest thing is honestly more of a philosophical change on how Unity sees the engine, and that specifically means two things, so it means incremental upgrades and no breaking changes. Here in the keynote and roadmap there was no mention of Unity 7 or Unity Next Gen. They didn't talk about that because it really does not exist. Although all the changes they announced previously for Unity 7, the merging of the random pipelines, the ECS for all, merging game objects and entities, the core CLR integration and all of those, those are all still coming, just not coming in something called Unity 7, but rather just incremental updates to Unity 6. They showed a slide on how they're thinking about versions, and basically we've got Unity 6.0, then we've got the increment support version, so 6.1 and 6.2. Then 6.3, that is going to be an LTS release. And then next year, we got 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, and eventually 6.7, also long-term support. So over here on this, as you can see, there's no clean break for something like Unity 7. Because again, that does not exist. The whole point is more smaller incremental upgrades as opposed to a massive thing that is going to break all kinds of projects. So this really was the biggest thing at Unite this year. And personally, I think it's a really great thing. I was at a private meeting with the CEO of Unity alongside other insiders, other assets or publishers and various people. And it was really awesome to see him speak very openly about this. He specifically said how the idea of making a brand new version of Unity and breaking all the projects for everybody currently working on it. He said how that was completely insane. And I definitely do agree. I think breaking all kinds of projects just to implement a brand new version with a shiny new number, I think that is not a good thing. I was willing to accept these massive breaking changes with the assumption that was the only way to get these massive benefits. But the fact that they can actually achieve these benefits without causing breaking changes by just doing incremental updates, I think that's a massive thing. And I'm definitely looking forward to Unity following along with this plan, constant iterative updates without breaking all kinds of projects. But importantly, like I said, all those things that were previously announced for Unity 7 or Unity Next Gen, those are still coming. Like for example, Core CLR, this is the big one that people have been wanting for many years. And they actually showcase a very detailed roadmap on how exactly they're going to achieve it. So starting off with 6.4, which is coming out in early next year. That one is going to have just initial proof of concept. Then they're going to start doing some internal testing. They're going to do validation with select customers. And then on 6.7 LTS, so that's by the end of next year, by then it will have an experimental package. And finally, sometime after that, it will have the proper package fully implemented. And then we can get all the benefits of being on the latest.NET version, the latest c -sharp version, having faster reload times, faster compilation speed, all those awesome benefits. Those are coming and they're going to be coming in this really nice incremental manner. Same thing for ECS for all, meaning merging both entities and game objects. For this, this was previously planned and now it still is. So apparently they're planning for implementing it in 6.4. This will make entities a core package so they can release features much more fast. And then in 6.6, .6, it's going to have a unified runtime. I believe this is what they talked about when they say how every game object will be able to attach an entity component and every entity will be able to have game object components. So kind of merging all those things. Apparently that is going to happen on 6.6. .6. Just one piece of negative news was the previously announced the dots animation package and the dots rain package. Those packages are basically on hiatus right now. They're basically on pause, essentially because they are very much dependent on ECS for all. So basically they first have to do that. They first have to merge both dots and game objects, and then they can actually go back to work and build those packages. The other awesome thing that was previously announced for what was going to be NT7 is simply the merging of the render pipelines. And if that is still happening, so over here on 6.3 LTS, so just coming soon, this one is basically going to start merging both URP and HRP by using the shared render graph layer. And then their plan is basically, instead of dumping down HRP to the level URP, apparently their plan is to build up URP to the level of HRP, and then you end up with just one render pipeline. So again, this is another real awesome thing that was announced last year. And now it is coming, it is still the plan, just not without that massive breaking change. So you'll be able to constantly update your projects. And soon enough, in a future version of Unity 6, we're going to have just a unified render pipeline. Another unification thing was in terms of netcode. Right now, as you might know, there are two netcode stacks. You've got netcode for game objects and netcode for entities. And for this one, the plan is also basically to merge those two into just one. And that is going to be kind of dependent on the ECS for all. So basically, they're first going to do that, make sure entities and game objects work well together. And then they're basically going to merge these two. That way, in the future, there won't be just one networking stack. And for this, technically, soon enough, you'll be able to get a glimpse on how this merging might work. They're going to be publishing two multiplayer templates. So one is going to be a third-person gameplay sample. So kind of like a third-person action-adventure platform. This one is going to be using Netcode for game objects. However, the other one is a first-person shooter in multiplayer. And this one, they mentioned how they're going to be using the Netcode, the same one that they've used in Survival Kids. That is the game that Unity themselves made and published. And that one apparently mixes both game objects and entities. So I'm definitely very curious to get this template, just to see how exactly do they handle that merging. The game Survival Kid seems to work very well in multiplayer, so I'm definitely very curious to see how that works. 
Now, another very, very important thing that they actually mentioned last year and that I really did not like hearing. Thankfully, they went back on that, which is how previously last year they talked about Unity Y and they mentioned how the initial goal was for Unity Y to basically be deprecated. They were going to basically destroy it as soon as UI token was up to standard. But thankfully this year, they pretty much went completely 180 on that. So nowadays they say how Unity Y remains a very critical feature, fully supported in Unity 6. Now this is a really awesome thing. Personally, I'm still a big fan of Unity Y. When it comes to runtime UI, it is excellent. I'm already so used to it, it works great. And this is yet another instance of the thing that I was saying in the beginning, that little philosophical change. So previously their goal was basically to get rid of Unity UI and force all developers to go into UI toolkit. But again, going back to that, that would basically break a ton of projects. You can imagine a project like Hearthstone, which was made many, many years ago and is still active. So it's definitely using Unity UI and not UI toolkit. So the idea that you would just completely break a project like that, that sounds insane. And thankfully the CEO does agree with that. That is insane, so they're not going to do it. So yep, Unity UI will remain a critical feature. So for the foreseeable future, you can still use this one without fear. But of course, if you don't like UI Toolkit, that's also okay. That is still a very great tool and it's continuously getting improvements. They recently just had World Space UI, custom shaders and filters, and vector graphics, so you can use SVGs. They also added more image controls, aspect ratio, new public APIs. So they are continuously improving UI Toolkit to make it to feature parity with Unity UI, but importantly, without actually getting rid of Unity UI. So personally for me right now, if I'm making edited tools, then I'm going to be using UI Toolkit because that one is really excellent and much better than the old IM GUI. But for making runtime UI, I'm still very much a fan of Unity UI. So I'm very thankful they are not going to break my projects. They are not going to get that tool away from me. Another extremely important thing they talked about a little bit more is production verification. This is basically where Unity works with external studios in order to analyze their code. And that way they can basically test out new features on active live projects. For example, they verify the 6.3 LTS version, the one that is coming out soon. They verify this one with Survival Kids. That is the one game they made themselves. So they now have a fully functioning project. It's actually a game that is published that you can buy. And now they have access to that project in order to test out any new features coming in the future. They've also got access to V-Rising, Phasmophobia, a bunch of supersonic mobile titles, and Den of Wolves by 10 Chambers. So you have this really excellent, this is another sign as to their focus on actual stability for the engine. So testing in real production with all of these real titles, these are not demos, these are actual real games. And the fact that they can test Unity with these actual real projects. They mentioned how these have already yielded results with regressions declining from version to version, meaning every single version is becoming more and more stable. That's always great. So this whole project is really all about focus on quality and apparently it's already paying off already with great benefits. One potentially awesome new thing is announced was the platform toolkit. This one looks really awesome. Basically, if you have just one code path to implement pretty much any kind of console, any kind of API. So you write the code just once and you publish it on pretty much every single platform that Unity supports. Now, this seems really excellent. Honestly, this is one of those things that seems too good to be true. So I'm definitely very curious to see this. Personally, I've never actually made a console game, but I've heard that dealing with console SDKs is a nightmare. And this one basically just abstracts all of that away from you. You just write the code just once, and then in the back end, that knows how to interact with the Xbox SDK, with the Steam SDK, the Switch SDK, all of those. So you really just write the code once and you can deploy to any console, any device, anywhere. Like I said, this seems way too good to be true. So I really hope it works exactly how they're talking about. Nowadays, if you make some kind of game and you want to port it into consoles, usually that's a massive task. So usually you hire some kind of porting studio to do that. But if this works very well, then developers might be able to just publish onto those consoles without having to go through all that process. Another thing that I've heard very much about is how certification is a nightmare. And this one basically lets you test. It basically lets you do certification by yourself before you actually contact the consoles. You can validate that your build works perfectly and then you can contact the consoles and hopefully get that process much, much more smoothly. So if this one seems really excellent, just one code path, integrate once, and you can publish anywhere. I'm definitely very curious to see if this one does manage to achieve all the benefits they've mentioned. And this one is out very soon on 6.3 LTS. They also announced something interesting that I'm not sure I fully understand. It's called Unity Core Standards. This is basically a way for them to validate third-party tools to make sure they all work with the engine. And importantly, they are actually verified and signed. This is supposed to standardize things so you can get things from registry, from the asset store, from Unity themselves, from open source, third-party websites, and really anything. And then those packages, they can be signed by developers themselves. And if it is signed correctly, you'll be able to see that over there on the package manager. Now, this seems interesting, although I think this is more useful to things that are outside of the asset store. Because if you grab something from the asset store, as far as I know, it is already basically signed by default since the developer was the one that uploaded it to the asset store. So I'm guessing this is more useful to things that are outside, like some open source packages, and you want to be able to know that those are exactly what you're downloading. Or perhaps some third party packages that are closed source and not in the asset store. So maybe that's what this is more useful for. I'm not entirely sure because again, when I download something from the asset store, I already know that I'm getting the actual code from the asset store. Unless there's some kind of vulnerability that I'm not aware of. 
But as far as I know, nope, if I download from the SSR, I get the package the developer added. So I'm not entirely too sure about this one, but the concept of core standards, that sounds interesting. And of course, it couldn't be a tonk in 2025 without any mention of AI. So they talked a little bit about AI. And thankfully, they actually talked about some things that do sound generally interesting. Importantly, they talked a lot about agents, AI agents. So you still got the usual generative AI sort of thing. You can generate textures, sprites, animations, and so on. Those already exist. But the more important thing is how the agents, these have quite a lot of context. Apparently, they are better at generating code and giving you better answers directly based on the context of your project. They can also now help with visual debugging, so I think that is very important. That is a great use case. And one that I saw demo that seemed very impressive, I didn't get to actually use it, but there was them on the show floor, basically how the model can analyze profiler data. So you can basically have your game running, go into the profiler, and attach the AI agent onto it, and say, why is my game running slowly? And I saw a demo, and it seemed to give some pretty good answers. Okay, so it said, basically, looking at these various render passes, this one seems to be taking so long, so go into this setting to try to modify this. So it did seem to give some very accurate answers. So this one specifically for analyzing profiler data, this one might be super useful. And then apparently in the future, they're making an agent that can actually build UI toolkit UIs. Another one to help validate your builds. So I do like the fact that when they're talking about AI, they're not doing just the general thing. You can generate images, sprites, and so on, because that's already been done by pretty much everyone around. So I do like that they're focusing on a more specific niche use case, helping you with the profiler, helping you make UI builds, helping you analyze your composition. I think those can be generally useful cases for AI. In terms of 2D tools, they announced something interesting. So render 3D as 2D, meaning you can have an actual 3D model in your 2D game. And just by toggling a checkbox, you can basically make that 3D object be rendered just in 2D. So you can play around with the sorting order, all those. It interacts with all of the various studio lights, all the various studio effects. So if this one seems like a very useful feature, if you make 2D games, it can sometimes be very helpful to basically just build your characters, build your objects in 3D, and then use them in 2D. And with this, you no longer need basically that pre-processing process of going from 3D to 2D to actually use it in the game. You can really just use the 3D mesh directly in the game. It will be affected by lights, physics, shadows, and so on. Everything looks really great as if it's part of a 2D scene. Then they also announced a new 2D level level physics API. I believe this is Box 2D, the new version. This one is apparently more performance, so really great for any 2D games. In terms of graphics, they also announced some interesting things. For me, the most important one is screen space reflections coming to URP. That is a pretty massive lagging feature, so I'm glad to see it's coming. Also very importantly is fully dynamic diffuse GI, so global illumination. This is another very important thing, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Again, the whole goal is to bring URP to the level of AGRP. And then you basically have those two merged. One interesting thing they talked about, and they've mentioned a few times, is what they're calling Unity Vector. This is basically their AI machine learning model, which is mainly marketed towards mobile developers, in order to have your mobile game ads being able to find the right players. So since this is about mobile, it doesn't necessarily interest me too much, but it got me thinking. So if you have this really great model that is capable of finding the perfect players for mobile games, it makes me wonder, could this also work on normal Steam PC games? Could you have this sort of thing that somehow works for finding players for your Steam games? Obviously, the whole thing would be paid. But still, if you can pay a little bit in order to find the right players for your game, that could be really awesome. So yeah, that could be interesting. Now, as far as I know, this is really mobile only. I have no idea if there's any plans to bring this kind of tool to PC. But if so, that could be a really useful tool. Of course, they also mentioned some nice quality of life improvements for the edited itself. So for example, a fun one is customizable main toolbar coming in 6.3 LTS, meaning you can actually modify the toolbar at the top. That's a small thing, but it's nice. Another great one is the new edited stats window. This one has been pretty much exactly the same since I remember using Unity, and I've been using Unity for over 10 years, and yep, that window has been basically the same. So it's nice to see that it's going to be improving with a bunch more stats. Then search performance, apparently that one is getting a big boost. And perhaps more importantly, in 6.6, .6, we're going to be getting a faster, more flexible hierarchy. This one is basically being built from the ground up using UI Toolkit, so it is going to be able to efficiently handle millions of objects. It is going to have visual indicators for game objects, and importantly, it is actually going to have horizontal scrolling. Then one package I only found about recently is the accessibility package. This one is really great. I mean, it's awesome how so many more players can play pretty much all kinds of games thanks to these features. And the fact that they are baked into the engine itself means that it is much, much easier for games to actually add these features. So Windows and macOS screen reader. This is how you can actually read the UI for your game so that people who are visually impaired or audibly impaired they can actually still play your games. So this one definitely feels like a very interesting package that I didn't even know existed. Another awesome package that I've heard many things about but haven't used it just yet is the Graph Toolkit. So this one is becoming a core module, meaning it's not an actual package. It is just built directly into the engine. And this one's basically a tool for helping you build all kinds of interesting graph tools. For example, if you want to make a tool kind of like Shady Graph, kind of like VFX Graph, you can build those using the Graph Toolkit. Then if you are a mobile developer, if you have live ops in your games, if so, they also announce a bunch of stuff. Again, like I said, I'm not a mobile developer. I don't know pretty much anything about live ops. 
So I have no idea if these features are good or not, but they announced a bunch of stuff. There's all kinds of insights, optimize your game with data. Again, I'm really not familiar with any of this. And of course, there's the big news of Unity partnering with Epic. I cover that in a dedicated video. So if you want to know what that about, definitely go watch that video. So if that's my quick recap, definitely quite a lot of things on a lot of stuff. Personally, I was very happy with this Unite and very happy with the future of Unity going forward. Like I said in the beginning, that philosophical change, I do think that is the most important thing. Hearing the CEO himself say how it's basically insane to make all kinds of breaking changes basically every single year. That was really great to hear. So hearing that they are focused more on stability and smaller incremental updates, I think that is a very positive thing. That way the engine keeps evolving, but you don't have to constantly break your projects and constantly upgrade new versions and constantly have to fix tons of stuff. That way the engine keeps improving, but without breaking everything every few years. Now, personally for me, as someone who makes tutorials, this is a very good thing. It means that my tutorials stay fully up to date for longer than previously. And actually, I'm currently in the middle of remastering basically all my tutorials to Unity 6. And I'm happy to know that basically one year from now, I won't have to redo all of that again. So yep, I was happy with this Unite. So I'm happy to see how all the features like ECS for all, merging of the random pipelines, the core CLR. I'm happy how all of those are still going to happen. But thankfully, without any massive breaking changes, the engine will really just continuously improving bit by bit every single version without requiring a massive major change. So basically in the present, the engine is already excellent and the future looks very bright. Again, thanks to Unity for inviting me to Unite, and thanks to all of you who came up to me to say hi. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.